Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create raised panel doors in SketchUp. So we're gonna cover things like how to trim solid components against each other using solid tools, or if you're using a free version of SketchUp, I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing using intersect faces. We're also gonna look at how to soften edges really quickly and a one-click trick on shading the faces in your model so you can go from this to this. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna share a free extension that you can use to scale components without losing the proportions of your styles and rails. So let's go ahead and get started. So raised panel doors are made using special router bits that create a tongue and groove profile so you can interlock styles and rails like this to build a door. And then there's a third type of router bit that is used to cut the panel that goes in the middle. And the panel actually fits right in this groove that's created by the other router bit. So the first thing we need to do in SketchUp is actually create the profiles of the router bits. So these router bits are actually uh, inverse of each other. So one of them cuts the, the tongue, the other one cuts the groove. So in this example, I'm actually creating two doors side by side like this. But the first thing we need to do in order to create the first um, style here is create this profile. So you need to create this first uh, face that uh, mimics the shape of the router bit. So that's what I did down here. So this is the first step. So I'm gonna just do this quickly. If you need uh, some tips on using basic SketchUp tools, you can check out some of my other videos, but I don't wanna waste too much time going through um, all the step-by-step -step here. So I would just start out with a rectangle and resize that to three quarters. And then, uh, by the way, if you have, if you know the model number of the router bits that you have, you can look on the website uh, and possibly find a drawing showing the profile of the router bit and that can be really helpful. All right, so I'm gonna take the tape measure tool, go down eighth of an inch, create a line at seven sixteenths and then a quarter. So I'm just using the, um, the snapping interval for this here. I'll create this line here and then in order to get the arc, I'm going to use the tape measure tool and drag a guide between these two points. And then I'll create another guide going to the midpoint. So now I have this mid uh, intersection that I can use with the arc tool. All right, and then I grab the arc tool, click once here, click here, and I'm gonna just eyeball how far out I want the arc to be and then I'll create a second arc and that's gonna automatically snap to the tangent. And there we go. So we have the first profile here and then, you know, just repeat the same similar process to create the panel profile over on this side. Now we don't actually have to create the inverse router bit profile um, for the tongue because uh, you'll see in a little bit, we're gonna actually use some intersection tools, the solid tools, in order to um, just kind of automatically cut that out for us. All right, so once we have the profiles created, we need to figure out how big these doors need to be. So I went and measured the cabinet that I'm building these doors for, and the opening is 15, 15 and three quarters by 27 and five eighths. So with the rectangle tool, I'm gonna to just tap the left arrow to lock to the, the green axis and I'll create a rectangle and then I'm gonna correct that to 15 and three quarters by 27 and five eighths. So this is the actual opening size um, that, that I'm building these doors for. And since I have two doors, I wanna make this a component so I'll tap G to create component. I'll just name that door opening. And I'm gonna make a copy of this component to represent the other door opening. So I'm gonna snap it here with the move tool and then I'm gonna just click again and then I'm gonna move it over the two and a half inches which is the width of that vertical rail 
um, in the cabinet. So why is that important? Well, the hinge that I'm using for the cabinet doors actually require a three quarter inch overlay. So what I'm gonna do is make the door three quarters of an inch wider than the door opening all the way around. So I need to make sure I have enough space and that the doors are not gonna interfere with one another. So in order to arrive at the actual size of uh, door that we need, I'm gonna jump inside of this component, I'll press F for the offset tool, and I'm gonna offset by three quarters of an inch in order to find the actual size of the door. So this, this uh, rectangle represents the cabinet opening and then this uh, rectangle represents the actual size of the door. Now, since we're just using these edges just for representing boundaries, I'm gonna actually delete the faces in here. And maybe just for fun, we will add a layer boundaries and we'll set a dash for that. And we'll, we'll assign both of these components to that that layer that way we can see these are just representing boundaries all right now that we know the exact size of the door let's go over here and we can grab this profile so with the move tool m for move tool i'm going to grab this back edge here i'm going to tap control to make a copy that way we can leave this over here and i'm going to snap right to that corner and then p for push pull we're going to extrude this all the way up to the top. So now that we have our 3D style, let's go ahead and make this into a component. So we'll triple click and tap G for component. And I'm gonna name this, uh, the definition will be style and create. Um, it's actually telling me I already have that uh, in the model because I have these over here. All right, and then we can just copy this over to the right side. So M for move tool, I'll click this corner, tap control to, to indicate that I wanna make a copy. And I'm gonna just place it right here for now and then hover over till I can grab one of these red handles in order to rotate it. So uh, there is an alternative way, you can actually invert components by just right clicking and selecting flip along, but I don't really like doing that when I'm uh, doing a project like this, cause it's like you can't invert uh, wood um, in real life. So, you know, there are instances if you're, if you're flipping something that's not perfectly symmetrical like this, uh, where you can kind of get into a, a situation where you've, you've created a component that's not literally the same thing. So, um, that's why I like to just kind of rotate uh, objects like this in this in, the, in in this situation. And then we'll go ahead and just move that to the final corner. All right, so now that we have these two styles, let's actually select both of them. So I'm gonna hold down, uh, I'll tap spacebar to get the select tool, hold down shift to add to my selection. So I now have both of these selected. And then I'm going to tap G to make a component out of those. So this is going to actually be the door. So let's see if I used that name yet. No, I didn't. All right. So now I can copy this door with the move tool, tap control, snap that over here. And now anything I do inside this component will get copied, uh, you know, it'll be an identical copy over there. So you'll notice the rest of the model disappeared that might not be happening for you because I have a keyboard shortcut for um, view, component, edit, hide rest of model. So I can just tap X to uh, toggle that shortcut, which I find really helpful. Um, I can link in the description below if you wanna learn how to set that up for yourself. But now we need to make the top rail. So instead of starting from scratch again, let's go ahead and use this component um, to start with and we will make it unique. So I'm gonna move that with the, the move tool, tap control to make a copy. We'll rotate this 90 degrees and then I'm going to use the move tool and bring it up here. So right now we're actually seeing an overlap of both of these components. So I'm going to, uh, let's first make this unique. So we're gonna right click, make unique and then 
I'm gonna double click to jump inside of this component and just shorten this up so uh, we don't have that overlap anymore. So this is now a unique component, but we need to cut this, uh, this profile, the negative part of this profile into this piece. And if you're using SketchUp Pro, you can use the solid tools really easily for this. So you can find the solid tool um, toolbar by just right clicking in the toolbar, toolbar area and making sure solid tools is checked. And we're gonna select one of these vertical styles and we'll select trim and then click on that. And then we'll do, we'll tap escape and then we'll do the same thing here. We'll click this one, click this one, and here is the result. So it automatically trims that first component against this second one. Now keep in mind whenever you use the solid tools, it will actually um, convert the component into a group. Um, so it doesn't actually affect any other copies of a component you might have in your model. Um, so if you want this to be a component, we're gonna have to explode it and reconvert it into a component. So I just exploded it, tap G, and we'll call that rail. And so now it's a component and we can copy it down there. But if you're using SketchUp Free, I wanna show you an alternative method for creating uh, this profile if you don't have access to the solid tools. So let me back up a little bit. All right, so instead of using solid tools, we can actually use the intersect faces command um, in order to do this. So in order to use intersect faces, we need to actually grab the faces that we need to intersect uh, in, inside of this component. So what I mean by that is we need to jump in into this component here and we need to get to like a top view and we can maybe go to a parallel projection and we need to drag a selection box over these edges and you'll see it selects all the faces as well. And we're gonna tap Control C to copy those, those uh, entities. And I'll switch back to perspective view. And so now you're, you'll switch to the top rail component. I'm just gonna hide rest of model. And you'll choose edit paste in place. So that's gonna paste those, those edges um, right into that component. Now the problem is, wherever the fi these faces are, um, where they appear to intersect each other, there's actually no edges there. So we need to use a command to intersect all of those faces with each other. So we'll triple click to select everything, right click, intersect faces with, you could use either with context or with selection. So I'll choose with context and now we can just clean up uh, the excess that we don't need. I'm just gonna turn on X-ray real quick so we can see a little bit better as to what we're doing here. So we'll just clean up those, those uh, extra edges and that is the result. Now we do have some reversed faces. So this, this face needs to be reversed. I think this one as well. So a shortcut for that is to just select a face that is oriented correctly, right click it, and select orient faces. And that'll make sure all of the faces are oriented correctly. That only works on solid uh, groups and components, by the way. And then you would just repeat that on the other side. All right, and if you get some edges like this um, that you want to have smooth, you can use the eraser tool while holding uh, control and that'll soften and smooth uh, edges individually. Or you can just select the entire component and use the soften edges panel, uh, check uh, soften coplanar, and then you can drag this slider to, um, to select the angle at which you'd like edges to be softened. So that softens the other side as well. All right, so now we can copy this top rail down here. So move tool, tap control for copy and we will rotate this one like this. 
and then just finish that final movement down there. So we have our door frame finished and the last thing we need to do is model the panel that goes in the middle. So let's go ahead and grab the panel profile. Now you can see this isn't the correct um, width or anything. So I'm gonna just uh, grab the move tool and go from this corner, tap control, and we're gonna just position it up here to help us figure out exactly where this needs to be. So, um, so we wanna make sure there's a little bit of a gap um, in the groove. So I'm gonna bring this in a 16th of an inch, that way, so overall it'll be an eighth inch smaller than that gap there. And then we want to select this edge and grab the move tool and we'll tap the right arrow key to snap to the red axis. We'll bring that right to the midpoint of that top rail. And now we're gonna use the follow me tool to extrude this profile around um, the perimeter of the door to, uh, to create the panel. So in order to do that, we need to uh, select this profile, grab the move tool, tap up on the, uh, the up arrow to lock the blue axis. And we wanna position this just somewhere uh, inside where the panel exists. And to make our lives easier, we can uh, grab the profile that we created earlier. So we need a path to use the follow me tool with. So we're just gonna double click inside of this group, triple click to select this rectangle, control C to copy it, and then we'll back out. And then actually let's make a group from this profile. Um, so we'll triple click and right click make group, and then we'll double click to jump inside of that. And then we will paste in place the path that we just copied. And with the path still selected, all you have to do is grab the follow me tool, click on that, um, that profile, and it extrudes our panel for us. So we just need to do a little bit of cleanup. So if I turn on x-ray mode, you can see we have this uh, some entities right there that need to be fixed. And obviously the whole thing is inside out. So we need to reverse faces and then orient faces and we can actually get rid of this uh, path as well. So again, we have um, some edges that we might wanna hide, so we can just select that component and uh, just work this slider until we find um, that threshold where everything's softened and smooth the way we want it. And you're probably wondering why the panel isn't appearing here. I just need to uh, cut this out, so control X, and then I need to jump inside of this component and paste in place. I have a keyboard shortcut, Shift V, and so now it's in the correct component, and we finished the raised panel door. Now there's two more things I wanna show you really quick. So uh, typically, your model will look like this. So the shading of the faces will be dependent upon the angle of the camera uh, in relationship to the face itself. Now, if you use this feature, use sun for shading, it gives you a consistent shading effect uh, regardless of the angle of your camera. And it works really well for shapes like this that have curves. And then you can just play around with the, um, the, the, the time setting, the sun setting, uh, in order to find a nice angle um, to shade the component the way you like it. And if you're gonna be bringing this into layout, it is helpful to kind of create an exploded view like this. Now this I just did manually. I just grabbed one of these doors. I made a copy over here. Uh, you do have to make it unique, otherwise it's gonna explode this one too. And then you just jump inside and move these over one at a time, you know, a specified distance. So that can be really helpful as well. But the last tip I wanna share with you is how to resize a door without losing the proportions. Because let's say you needed this door to be four inches wider. If you use the scale tool, um, it's actually gonna stretch out the entire component. 
So alternatively, uh, I recommend checking out this plugin called Fredo Scale, and there's a feature called box stretching where it will scale the component from an imaginary plane and it keeps all the proportions of the component uh, while also allowing you to scale it. So that's a really great uh, extension. I'll have a link below. Again, it's free. You have to get it on the Sketchucation warehouse or store, the Sketchucation store. It's not available on the extension warehouse. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.